Hi, I mentioned that I was going to go ahead and make a video um, today. And so before any further days pass, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So I pray that the Lord gives me the words to say and that he helps me to rebuke and exhort those that are listening um, with his Holy Spirit and with uh, love. So this is my response um, to to those that are saying that the rapture is going to happen in 2013. Um, and in particular to one person that I'll mention in a bit. Um, however, I just feel that they're being um, deceived. And of course, I've been told the same thing by others that are especially the ones that are following these people. Um, you know, I get emails and comments all the time that I'm the one that's being deceived and accused that I'm not watching and expecting the Lord at any moment. And that's not true. Uh, I've been hoping and waiting and watching for his return, uh, for us to be taken in the rapture for over 20 years now. So, um, he says to not stop watching and waiting. In fact, that, um, we are to treat each and every day at, that we are here, um, as a ministry to him and to serve him, um, we are his servants. Um, we're his bond servants, which means we're, we gave ourselves to him to serve and worship the Lord um, with all that we are. And so our, our mission here, um, this is not our home, and our mission here is to proclaim the gospel, the good news of salvation, the, the message of Christ coming, God himself humbling himself and becoming a man yet not giving up his deity but becoming a man so that he can he can um he can feel what we feel and and he can sympathize with us in our weaknesses and he he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins that no other person could ever do um so we are supposed to preach the gospel and go into all the world and preach it um we're, our focus shouldn't be the rapture, um, not to say that we aren't to watch and be sober, because he's definitely shown me that in the la in, with the two dreams that he's given me. Um, we are to expect him. Um, the Bible says that over and over, and I'll give you some verses. But we are, he is not going to tell us the day. He's not going to tell us the hour. Um, we can know the season, and we can discern from the times and from... Um, you know, the signs and the prophecies that we see unfolding, we can certainly tell if we're in the season of it and in the season of the end times and the tribulation. Um, but we, he's not going to tell if the angels and no one knows except the father, what day and hour Jesus is going to be sent to rapture his church, then we certainly can't expect to know the day, the exact day or dates. So that first off, and so let me use some scriptures to back up what I'm saying here. First of all, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we know that we can trust the word of God and what it says. So we use this to for to further our knowledge and for instruction in righteousness also second timothy chapter four verses two to four preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. I believe I see this happening, especially on YouTube and with many of the teachers, even though they, they might not claim to be teachers or have the gift of teaching, they certainly are teaching people something because people are listening and they're teaching it as though it is doctrine and as though they have heard from the Lord um, some, and then even some say they're not a prophetess, 
but yet they're saying that the Lord told them things. So I can't understand. I asked the person, how, how can you be, how can you say that the Lord has told you these specific things if you have repeatedly said that you're not a prophet, you're not a prophetess, um, but yet you're receiving, you're receiving words and um, whole sentences and such from, and things from the Lord that he's shown you, but yet you're not a prophet. So I don't, that, those sorts, that, that contradicts. So that's, that's one warning light I have for that person. Okay, so how do we know when the rapture is going to happen? Well, the Bible specifically states in Luke 12, 35 to 40, Matthew 24, 36 to 51, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 11, um, as well as a couple verses in other scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 and in Revelation. Um, near the end of the, in the bowl section at the end of the tribulation that he comes as a thief in the night and so um we know that he's coming at an hour that we won't expect him although we should expect him if we're in the light so basically what well, we can know the season like i said before we are to watch and that and the video i made about how he showed me the rapture wasn't going to be happening December 25th to January 4th, like everyone was stating. There were like four or five um, main people that were on YouTube sharing this. And then when he showed me on the 23rd of December, it wasn't going to happen in this time frame. Um, uh, three of them deleted their channels and their videos. One of them deleted their all their 2013 videos and now makes... A new one that says that he's going to be rapturing the church January 20th to the 24th um, and then another one is saying the other two other main ones are saying by January 14th and I'm sure when the 14th comes and passes then they're gonna be stating it's the 24th like the other person that is saying the 20th to the 24th that wouldn't surprise me or they're gonna extend it even further and say God's using the Jewish calendar so what I have found with the Lord, he doesn't make things complicated. His word is not complicated if you have the Holy Spirit to discern it for you. Um, when when we have the Holy Spirit living in us, when we're saved, um, that's who teaches us and instructs us in all things and gives us discernment when we read the word and when we listen to others. Um, pray for discernment, um, brothers and sisters, because... I feel that there's lots of discernment lacking out there. Um, and so pray that you're, that you're not deceived. Also, pray for the Lord to give you understanding when you're reading his word. And I strongly suggest that you go back and you read Daniel, read Genesis and Job, and you read Matthew, Luke, John, and Revelation. And 1 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians if you'd like. Read the word, be in the word, and use that as your focus because I agree with um, Minister Paul that there's too many people, and even Firestarter, Firestarter said it, I think. Um, anyways, there's um, too many people that are relying on YouTube to teach them things, and they're not in God's word. Um, we can't learn from the best unless we read the best and God is the best. So we need to be in his word and praying to him um, more than we are spending time on the internet. Um, it, you have, if you have children or if you, of course you have parents. Okay. How does that relationship go? If you never spoke to your parents and you never listened to your parents, or you never speak or listen to your children, how would that, or your wife or your husband, how would that relationship be? Okay, Jesus wants us to have a relationship with him, and we can't have a relationship with Jesus and know the heart of the Father and 
um, be blessed with all that he has to give us if we're not reading, listening to his word um, for ourselves with the Holy Spirit, not someone else teaching us. And, or if we're not speaking to him in prayer, asking him for things and asking him to guide us and, and um, praying for others and ourselves. So that's my, that's my rebuke and ex exhortation to all. Um, so when is it going to happen? You know, people have asked me that too. He hasn't told me when it's going to happen. And I don't think, and I'm not going to ask him anymore because I've asked him about the timing of it. And he gave me the dream that I already um, recorded. You can watch that. And then he gave me a second dream showing me that we're, we are going, we need to watch, be diligent, be sober, put on the breast plate, breast plate of righteousness, serve him in love, um, be ready for his coming as though it's any moment, but yet he's not going to tell us the hour that he's coming, that he's, but when he does come, he wants us to be re watching and ready and not be sleeping. He wants us to be ready. So that just means that we are supposed to live our life every day as though Jesus is coming tomorrow and serving him and making that our focus. If we live for him and do works and we serve others and we serve him and we read his word and we pray and we make him the focus of our lives each and every day, it won't matter when he comes because we will be ready. And that is what Matthew, Luke, and Thessalonians is talking about. That he doesn't want to come and see us. It says in um, Luke 12, 37, Blessed are those servants whom the master when he comes will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come in and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch, so if he comes by whenever and finds them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have not, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect. And he's shown me that he's going to come and no one will know the day or the hour that he is coming. Um, in 1 Thessalonians, you're, I'm sure you're aware of that, in, in chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. And then, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. For whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you are also doing. It doesn't bring comfort, folks, that are saying 2013 and that calendar year, the timeline that we use, and God knows our timeline, has come and passed. It doesn't comfort those who are expecting him by the 7th or the 14th or the 24th or this month. And then it doesn't happen. It actually causes the weak brother, weaker brothers and sisters to lose faith and to lose that hope that they have. It won't affect me or other people that have been Christians for a long time that um, aren't. That's not what they're relying on because they're trusting in Jesus and they 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 know that. He's going to come and they're going to be patient. Wait, but the weaker Christians, I personally had emails from people that are struggling. And if he doesn't rapture us, according to how some of these teachers are teaching, then they're contemplating suicide. And so 
that doesn't, it really, um, it really gives, it really irks me, uh, to be honest, because you're, you're giving them a false hope. And the only hope that we should be giving those in the world or to anyone is the hope of salvation through Christ Jesus and his sacrifice for us. So when you proclaim something that is so desirable that we all want it, um, it's better than anything we could ever receive here. And you're stating that the Lord told you this, then you have to realize what a heartbreak it is for some people when it doesn't come to pass. Now, two of the main people are saying the Lord told them he is coming in 2013, which is ending January 14th or 20. Yeah, all, they're both saying the 14th. I beg you, when this doesn't happen, to make a video and apologize so that all the viewers that have been watching and following you, especially those that are weaker in the faith, will will have some understanding and something to grasp onto instead of just being left out in the dark. The one other person that I have um, something else to say, and she states the 20th to the 24th, so I probably don't have to mention any names, um, she's already said that she would take all her videos down by January 5th if January 4th came and nothing happened. She did do that. Um, but then she made an apology video, my apology and my prayer, um, and I'll paste the link, the link to it in my text box below so that you can listen to the six minute mark yourself. 618 to 655, where she um, goes on a rant about people that have mocked or criticized her for what she has shared. Okay, I've emailed this person um, a couple, two times, and I haven't received a response. I don't think that they're, I, um, she could at least answer a simple question, but she hasn't answered any questions and she never responds to any of my posts. In fact, she just deleted all the posts that I had on any of her um, videos, which doesn't help anyone be led to the truth. Um, if there's nothing opposing what she's saying on her comments. Okay. But on, in her, in, on that six minute mark of her video, one of her statements is, the Lord has already told me that not one person that has openly mocked or criticized me will be taken in the first fruits rapture. After you repent and realize that you have been left behind, you will use, God will use you to reach um, people for his, or souls for his kingdom. So God bless you guys and, and, I know we'll be all be good friends in heaven. Okay. So my response to that, as lovingly as I can make it, is that um, first of all, she, God is not mocked. Whatever a man shall reap, that is what he will he will sow. Um, so I'm not mocking God or criticizing God by criticizing or opposing what you have said or shared. Um, I believe it's false. I believe that although you've studied for 12, 13 years, um, and that's the key word, studied and compiled, um, it wasn't God gave you puzzle pieces, but he, you said yourself that you're not a prophet. If you're not a prophet, then you don't hear directly from the Lord any pro prophecies or words of wisdom. So you say you're not a prophet, but then you said that the Lord had the Lord told you specifically that not one person who openly mocked or criticized you will be taken in the rapture. Now that is a strong statement. 
And I would never, unless God told me, unless he spoke audibly to me, I would never, ever have said something like that. Um, you are basically, you, you're not a prophet, but you heard God tell you that. So that's a contradiction right there. I don't understand how he gives you such powerful statements to proclaim if you are not a prophetess. Um, that's my one question that never got answered. Another question, another thing I have against that is, um, we won't be taken in the first fruits rapture. Well, the first fruits rapture was the rapture, the, the old Testament saints that the Lord Jesus took up with him when he ascended on high after his resurrection. So yes, we won't be taken in the first fruits rapture because that already happened um, at Pentecost. That happened when the Holy Spirit was poured out and he gave gifts to men, gifts to men and he led captivity captive. Um, Acts 2, I don't think I wrote it down, but I will put it in the text box. So it says that when he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Okay. So when he ascended on high, um, he rose from the dead. He appeared to many. Um, and then in the upper room, um, after uh, when, after when he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men because he let, he poured out his Holy spirit. I believe it's in Acts chapter five. Um, so the first fruits rapture was when he took those that were Abra in Abraham's bosom. There was Hades in Abraham's bosom. Um, and he took the old Testament saints, the old Testament Christians. They, they weren't Christians, but they were followers of God. He took them from Abraham's bosom and took them up to heaven with him. So the first fruit, Jesus Christ is the first fruits and later those that is appearing. Um, so anyways, the, nobody's going to make the first fruits because that already happened when he took the old Testament saints with him, when he ascended at, at his, at his ascension. So the rapture of the church is another separate, um, whole thing. And, um, Again, in Matthew 24, it talks about the hour that he's coming. And let me get my another paper. Revelation 16. I find it interesting that this verse is all the way in Revelation 16. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and see his shame. So could it be that it might not happen until way later in the tribulation time. Again, only the father knows until that day that Jesus does take us home. Um, second Peter chapter three is the whole chapter is excellent. So I suggest that you read the whole thing. Um, it talks about the scoffers in the last days and saying, where is he? He said he's going to come since, you know, for that 2000 years, people have been waiting for it. Um, uh, let's see chapter eight. So second Peter three, eight, but beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So he's not delaying to make us suffer. He's delaying and he's, he's, he's waited this long since 2000 years ago. He's waited this long because he's hoping that the gospel, we do our job and preach the gospel so that those that are unsaved can come to repentance and be saved as well. It doesn't sound to me like he's waiting until the rapture happens to get the message out there. And the person that made the apology video that I mentioned, who said that 
anyone who criticized her would not be taken at the rapture. She's basically speaking for God there, and she says, but she says she's not a prophet. So that's an oxymoron. And she said the first fruits rapture is not the rapture we're waiting for, the rapture of the church. The first fruits rapture already happened. Thirdly, um, instead of making, a, she said she made the, the videos, um, that the Lord gave her the puzzle pieces to make the videos so that um, it would witness to those that were left here during the tribulation um, when they wondered what happened and what's going on. And so that those people could be witnessed to, okay, and that it would bring thousands or millions or, you know, it'll bring many to salvation. Well, my response to that is, and I, I told her this too, so I'll tell it, share it with you is, um, instead of making a video, uh, telling the unsaved why they missed it and now you can be saved after the fact, because she said that those videos are not for the church to know the day of the rapture. That's not why she made it. She made it so that the unsaved would have something to hold on to and to become saved once it happens and they're confused. Why not make videos sharing the gospel so that those people can be saved now uh, and redeem the time as he tells us to in the word um, so that none should perish, but all should come to repentance as second Peter chapter three, verse nine states. Um, and also I don't, you know, during the tribulation, if there's going to be total anarchy and nuclear attacks and asteroids and meteors and um, economic troubles and the mark of the beast, I highly doubt they're going to be sitting at the computer watching YouTube videos. There's going to be, they're going to be running and hiding. So it's going to be the people on foot, the Christians, the people that get saved or, or the 144,000 that he leaves here as a witness for him that are going to be witnessing to him, not your puzzle piece videos with and no no uh no uh um i can't think of the word but i'm not to not to mock you but i'm just saying that they're not going to be sitting at the computers there might not even be any power during most of that time especially the second half and that's what he's leaving his 144,000 and his two witnesses here for is so that they can be ministered to when the church is gone, whenever he decides to take us. Could it be that he comes before anything ever happens? Yes. But it also, he also talks to the disciples and he tells them that they will see the abomination of desolation. Is he speaking just to the Jews, to the 144,000 possibly? Could it be that he comes when, once the tribulation starts, but before any of the wrath starts, possibly, could he come right after the midpoint? Yes. Could he come at the very end, be near the end, before we come with him, following him to destroy everyone when he comes back with his church? Yes. If he delayed that long, would you still be following him? Would you endure until the end, as some may? Would you endure to the end? Would you be willing to be beheaded for his witness? Would you be willing to run and hide and be a witness for him? Those are some powerful questions, but what if we had to be here for a while? Would that stop you from following him? Would that, sorry, my phone, would that stop you from, that would that hinder you from following him if he delayed that long? It shouldn't. We are still to be told to watch and be sober. Oh my goodness. Sorry. We are told to watch and be sober and to be diligent in our calling. So if he delayed that long, 
I pray that we all have the strength to endure and that we would be comforted and he would give us the power and the ability to serve him. I personally believe, and you know, this is just my belief. It's not my church's belief. It's just what God has shown me in the last few years. I've always believed that we're going to see some of the signs of the beginning and it might not be the tribulation. It just might be pre-trib like Steve at discover ministries talks about um, Steve, Steve at discover ministries on YouTube and Scotty at eternal rhythm and flow and minister Paul. Um, they all have good there. They all have good teachings, but again, I exhort you to read the word of God for yourself and study it to show yourself approved. But if you read in Re Revelation 6, he doesn't appoint us to wrath, but to salvation. But in chapter 6, um, when he opens the sixth seal, uh, now I lost my page. Okay. When he opens the sixth seal in chapter six of Revelation, it states that there's an earthquake, a solar eclipse, the moon is red, stars fall from the heaven like a fig tree is shaken in a mighty wind, which probably meteors. And then going on into chapter seven, the 144,000 are sealed, 12,000 from the, each of the 12 tribes of, of Israel. 144,000 are sealed as a witness for to leave here for him. And then there's a number that no man can number. It says in 7 verse 9, And after these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones that who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple, and he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more, nor thirst nor any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to fount living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So there's a multitude that no man can number of all tongues, tribes, peoples, and nations. This, I believe, is the church. And it happens at the sixth seal. And before this... After the sixth seal was opened, the angel proclaimed, um, the great day of his wrath has come. So read Revelations chapter 1 through 7 to get an, a beginning to the tribulation or pre-tribulation time. Um, but it's ironic how the 144,000 are sealed and then there's this great multitude in heaven and they come out of the great tribulation. Um, only the first five seals have happened before this. So the trumpets and bowls are worse. It, it gets progressively worse with each trumpet blast and each bowl that's poured out. There's the seals, trumpets, and bowls. And, um, if this was the martyred saints of the tribulation, this wouldn't be happening at the sixth seal because, Antichrist, he's in power, but there hasn't been total chaos and destruction yet. And what about all the martyred saints that are going to die from this point onward to the end of the tribulation? You know, so these are not, these are not, and it wouldn't be a number that no man can number because there's 7 billion people on the planet right now. So we can number that. Anyways, this is a greater number. I believe the last 2000 years, all the Christians. So, um, and it doesn't say they were martyred. 
or beheaded for what their witness. It just says they come out of the great tribulation. So um, my words, um, Galatians 6, 6 through 8, my exhortation here. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will reap of the flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So I pray that our deeds and our heart would be made manifest to all that especially to the Lord and that you have a, that your heart and mine would be continuously rejoicing in the fact that he is coming one day for us, whether we have to endure a month or a year or three or 10 more years, but however long he tarries and however long he delays, that we are found waiting, watching, and serving him because that is, that is what our focus should be. And that is our calling is to be ministers of Christ here on earth. So please, if these dates that people have set come and go and February 1st comes, I, I exhort you and I, I exhort you um, to be in the word and not be looking to man, um, for any answers and that you would just continue on with your life and serving him in the time that you have. The most important thing is witnessing and redeeming the time because the days are evil and short and the enemy knows that, that there is little time left as well. The signs of the end are all around us, and we know that we're in the last days. So our heart should be to serve him and to make our election and calling sure and to be watchful and sober, yet still serving him with the time that we have and making videos, if we're going to be here on YouTube, to be a voice for him and to make videos to witness who he is to the lost and the unsaved. Thank you and God bless.